Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and today we're going to talk about VMware Fusion Player 12. VMware has recently announced that the Mac version is now free for personal use. So if you've ever wanted to test different versions of Mac OS, Linux, or even Windows 10 on your Mac in a virtual machine, now is the time to start. In this video, I'm going to go over how to register your account, download the installer, and use it to configure your first Mac OS VM. Let's get started. When I first heard that VMware has made this version free, I had to give it a shot. I've used uh, the Pro version in the past in a, in a trial setting just to kind of test it out to see how it works, and it works really well. I just didn't want to lay down the $150 to do it. So when I first heard that it was free for personal use, I said, I got to give this thing a try. And I figured that you want to too. So let's jump in right here real quick. And I've got my article up here to kind of show you and walk you through how to get this going. I've got the links and everything you'll need to do here. One of the first ones you got to do is you got to go over the VMware portal here and register your account. And I've got this up here so you can kind of see this. It takes you right here. And you, all you need to do is, is click here to register your account. Then you can log in. Once you're in there, you'll be able to download the installer. Um, to get started. I've got the installer here so I can show you what that does. It also gives you your license key because you're going to need that later. So once you walk through the installer, it'll say, what's your license key? It's located in this address. But at, after you register, it, oh, it does show you the key right there. So once you have that key, you can type it in the installer. The installer is done and then you're ready to go. Um, Let's actually just, uh, what I do in here is I go, kind of go over it, but actually I would rather just walk through a complete demo. So let's actually run through a quick demo here. I've got the installer here. I'm going to double click on it to get it going. There we go. It's verifying the DMG. And opening the installer, you double click on this Fusion installer. And when that's done, Fusion will open up for you. And this is the window that you'll see. So um, notice how I've already got a couple in here, but that's no big deal. Yours will be blank, and all you need to do is go up here and hit plus, and then hit new. And when you hit the new, the, the select installation menu will come up. And what's very interesting about this new version is that in the past, you had to set up, uh, you had to go through complicated steps to take the, the full Mac OS installer and turn it into an actual ISO. The best thing about this now is you can just drag the full installer over here and just immediately get going. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I'll have the links in the description how to download the full installer. So let, this, this is perfect. If you wanted to install an old version of High Sierra, an old version of Mojave, you want to install 10.15.3 Catalina, if you want to test out Big Sur, you, as long as you have the full installer, you drag it in here and we can get started. So I've got a full installer here and I'm going to drag it over so you can see what that looks like. We're going to drag over Big Sur, and look at this, we're already off to here. Now, um, you'll notice that there's previous versions in here. If you've used a previous installer uh, before in the past, it gives you an option in, in this menu. What you'll see is only the one that you've brought over. So for example, I'm using Big Sur Beta 6 today uh, for our test. Now keep in mind, if you're if you're up to date with the betas, beta 9 will not install here. Um, but you're most likely going to be watching this in the future, so you can just drag the regular production version of Big Sur right in here, or Mojave or Catalina, and it's going to install just fine. So all you need to do is hit click continue. This is a kind of the finished screen. You can actually customize some settings in here if you wanted to, um, but the bottom line is it gives you the default settings of what it recommends for you. Also notice that for uh, Catalina and Mojave, it, the capacity is 40 gigs, but Big Sur needs a little bit more space, so they actually set it to 80 for you, so you don't even have to worry about that. Um, and it also looks at the memory that you have in the system and usually tries to, to manage that. For example, on this MacBook Air, I only have eight gigabyte, eight gigabytes of RAM. So it's saying we would recommend four gigabytes for this, uh, for this VM. So let's hit finish. And then it's going to show us where it's, it's going to say, where do you want to put this? And just no big deal. You keep it in your, uh, your user folder in a folder called virtual machines. And you can see that I've already built a couple in here. So I'm going to actually going to name this too. And we'll hit save. And it's going to say copying to disk and creating the install medium. So after that, um, what will happen is, is that uh, the, the whole VM will start. And what it's going to do 
is you are going to um, it's not going to like immediately start up to the operating system. It actually has to install itself into the VM. So what it's going to do is it's going to start up the VM, but it's going to boot directly to the Mac OS installer that you just dragged over here. So it's actually going to start up the Mac OS Big Sur installer just like if you booted to the recovery partition. So it boots up, takes a couple minutes to start up, and then once you get in, you'll see the regular recovery menu, and it'll ask you what you want to do. You might think that you have to go in there and, and, and erase the drive, but the drive is ready to go. It's all formatted, so all you need to do is click Install Mac OS, and that's it. You're on your way. Okay, so once that's done, you're going to be brought to this next screen, and it's going to tell you that you're running this virtual machine with side channel mitigations enabled. Side channel mitigations provide enhanced security, but also lower performance. So this is going to boot every time, and that's why you got the option to never select this dialog again. Um, and you can actually turn those off in the advanced section. I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to click OK here, and there's your VM. Here we go. So it's going to start up, but actually I'm going to stop the VM. I'm going to pause it. I'm actually going to go up to the virtual machine, and actually I'm going to let that suspend here. Actually, when I said when I said uh, pause, I want to actually shut this down because I can't edit the settings in the VM unless the VM is shut down. So we'll go up to virtual machine. We'll go into settings. And then we will go into the advanced, and this is where we can disable those side channel mitigations so we don't have to uh, see that message and the performance will increase. So once that's selected, we'll click that out and we will be able to go. And also, now is a good time to tell you about the, those other settings. So if you go back into the settings, this is where we can modify the how many processor cores. So if you've got like a MacBook Pro or a Mac uh, uh, or a Mac iMac with multiple cores, you can go in here and give it more processor cores. Obviously, the more processor cores, the faster it's going to go. I would go with the recommended settings, <clears throat> and if those are going a little bit too slow, you can bump it up. Also, here's that, that memory that I was talking about, where it shows you how much memory you can allocate. You can actually allocate more, but you're taking a more memory away from your, uh, your main host Mac, and this also tells you how much memory it's remaining for you to use on your Mac. So this is where you could kind of play around with this and, and set it to where you get that right amount of performance. So that's why I want to kind of show, go over and, sh and show you these kind of settings here. And then there's a, there's a ton of settings in here. You can go over all this kind of stuff. But let's get back to uh, where this machine is going to boot into recovery here. While we're waiting for this to boot, I pulled up Activity Monitor because I kind of wanted to show you that the, you can kind of use Activity Monitor to kind of manage your memory uh, especially this is uh, true on a, like for example this MacBook Air that I'm running that only has 8 gigs so you're kind of running that fine line of only giving the operating system 4 gigabytes and giving your your uh, your virtual machine 4 gigabytes of RAM so if you look here as long as you can keep your memory pressure uh, in the green you're usually okay once you start building into or uh, uh, yellow and then of course into red that's when that system's starting to swap in to hard disk and you're starting to have some slowdowns here so you can see that I've got eight gigabytes of physical memory and I'm only technically using about six gigabytes so I'm, st I'm sitting okay right now but again I'm only really in the install and I haven't even opened up anything yet so that will increase but we can take a look at that later so here's your language screen no big deal we go through it we've seen this before we select like this we'll get into the installer examining the volume and install Mac OS that's it boom let's get started install agree and we'll select the Macintosh hard drive and as you can see it's about 80, 80, 80 gig it detects us around 80 gigabytes and that's the the size that we set up in the original part of the setup and then just click continue and that's it done within 15 to 30 minutes however long it'll take you'll be right at the setup assistant window and you can log in and you've got your VM built um, the next thing you want to go over is some advanced settings so I'll get rid of this here The best part is you don't really have to shut it down. Look how nice this is. You can actually just sit, if you actually close the window, it actually save the virtual state and suspend the, the VM. Um, some other things I wanted to go over is, is that, well, 
how do you get this machine into recovery? Let's say you, you did your testing and you wanna rebuild it or you wanna take some snapshots. The best thing about snapshots is, is that you can take, uh, let's say you, you, you finished building your machine and you're at a self set up system window and you wanna take a snapshot of just that place so you can test your workflows. You can go up to the virtual machine, go to snapshots here and take a snapshot. And that's it. It takes a snapshot of that time, uh, or that very second in time of the installation. And then you can log in, do all your testing, install your apps, uh, configure your machine, see if it works. If it works, good. You can continue. What if it doesn't work, though? And you want to revert back, change some scripts or some settings or whatever you want to do, and then immediately re revert back. That's the beauty of the snapshot. It works wonderful. Um, so that's snapshots. But back to what I was saying about the recovery partition. Let's say that you want to edit some of the settings of the virtual machine here. The settings of each virtual machine is stored in your user folder or the users, your user folder and virtual machines. You can see these ones are the ones that I built and you can actually see the different sizes here. Um, let's say we want to boot this, this uh, Mac OS Big Sur beta into recovery because we want to do a full rebuild. So you see this file, we can actually show the package contents and look inside of this VM. And the, the file that we want to edit here is, is the macOS 11 beta.vmx file. That's the actual file that keeps all the configurations in there. And let's take a look at that. What we can do is we can use your favorite editor. I, I recommend BB Edit. So when we, we open that up in BB Edit, we can see all of the configurations in here. So what we would like to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're gonna add an we're gonna add an option to reboot to the recovery. So we'll go all the way down to line 14, we'll hit the return button and we'll we'll paste this line. Mac OS guest force recovery mode install equals true. So uh, once we save this and we start it up, it's going to read that and say, on the next boot, I'm going to boot this VM into recovery. So let's go up here. We'll save this. And if you want, and, and later when we're done, if you don't want to do that anymore, if you want to boot back into the operating system, no big deal. All we'll do is remove that line. And then I'll show you what else we need to do too. We actually have to, that is not enough to do it. You actually have to remove this NVRAM uh, file too. So you just right click and, and trash that because even if you edit this and you remove that line, it'll still boot your recovery until you remove this file. So let's try that out. Now that, that that's edited here, here so, and I, I, I forgot about that, the, Big Sur Beta has a bug in it where it re goes into a reboot loop if you add the recovery line. So if we go back to um, that that file here in uh, in a virtual machines folder, we'll do, we'll do it on 10.15.6. So we basically do, do the same thing. We show the package contents. And then inside there, we have to edit the VMX file. So we go right click on there and we'll open that up with a BB edit. And then right at the end, we'll add that, that line. So I already added it and what it'll do is it'll put it actually right, right on here um, in alphabetical order. Um, actually, I don't know, actually it's not alphabetical order. It looks like it puts it right into this area here because you can see there's E's here. But that's where it does it, when it, where it puts it. So when you come back, you're not going to find it at the end of the file. You're going to find it right here. So I put that in there, and we're ready to start the VM. So when we start the VM, I got that started up here. And then look at that. We're in recovery. So then you can do your reinstall. But here's the problem, though. After you do that, it's going to reboot. Like I said, mentioned before, it'll keep booting into recovery. So how do we do this, right? Well, we'll shut down the VM. And then we will move over here. Oh, and it, for example, one more thing. If the, the mouse control is outside of, uh, if, you, if your mouse is inside the VM to get it out, it, you use the, the use the control command 
key to get the mouse out. So if you're in here, you do control command and it releases the mouse so you can go back into the operating system. So again, let's go back in there and take that. Let's get back into recovery. So again, we open up that file again. And then we're going to remove that line right here. We're going to get rid of this line right here and get rid of that extra line. We'll do a command S to save it. We'll get out of BB Edit. And then we're going to delete this uh, NVRAM file. Delete, move the trash. And then we start it up again. Boom. It'll start to back up to Mac OS. So that's. Um, that's it for that. I don't think there's any other configuration settings that you might need right off the bat. This gives you pretty much everything you need to get started here um, using your, your virtual machine. Um, inside here though, I also wanted to show you that this is where it stores these snapshots too. Uh, the snapshots do take a de decent amount of size. So for example, this snapshot takes 4.9 gigabytes. So uh, keep it keep an eye on the size when you start taking some of these snapshots and again that's for each individual operating system so for example this one's 10.15.6 so let's say you have a test version of 10.15.5 well the more you have the more of these snapshots that you could build up so you want to keep an eye on that so uh, those should be the all the configuration settings that we need here and as you can see we're almost back into the operating system here and again, this is a great way to be able to test different things and not screw up your, your current operating system. You can do all the testing on this. Do whatever you want. If you blow it up, who cares? Just revert back to the snapshot in five minutes. You're done. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. I'll answer them. If you're having any kind of trouble, if you're running into any kind of roadblocks, uh, I'll put all the links to this article, all the links to the VMware pieces in the description. If you want to keep up to date with the latest macOS news, please subscribe. I'll put, I'll, I always update my website, my Twitter, and I'll make sure I post a, a video on all the latest macOS news. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you next time.